morning everyone. I'm Birunji Kortaro, I'm CEO of Kilimo Trust. Kilimo Trust is implementing the Rural Youth Employment Support Project um, in Rwanda. It's funded by IFAD and BMZ and it is a five-year project uh, which started in 2020. Distinguished guests in your various capacities, all protocol observed. Uh, welcome again to this supervision mission. The IFAD police, we are participants from different uh, organizations, Kilimo Trust, IPRC, RIAF, police, we are present. Good morning. Actually, this is not the first time we IFAD and the Kilimo Trust are personally to implement some small size project, I, I, if I can say. In the past, we used to have another regional grants covering the East, some, most of the country, the East African community, which was dealing with uh, <laughs> stop, uh, crops, uh, stop of crops. And it, the project was implemented well. We had a good project completion report showing some good achievements of the project. Thank you, I wish you a good workshop. And uh, I'm still confident that the implementation is being done according to the design, according to the challenges faced by the rural people. Thank you very much. My name is Andrew Kachaija. I'm the team leader for the RS project. RS is a five-year initiative of IFAD and DMZ that is implemented by Kilimo Trust and the partners, uh, RIAF and uh, Rwanda Polytechnic. So the project has uh, a goal to create sustainable employment, uh, both safe and uh, decent wage, for 3,000 youth. And uh, so out of 3,000, uh, 1,200 are direct beneficiaries of RS project. The 1,800 are expected to come from the enterprises that will be created by the youth enterprises. So those are the indirect beneficiaries. Uh, we have two objectives. The first one is to the, the capacities of youth. The other one is to generate knowledge uh, that will inform policy and uh, inform the scaling up of the model. Participants, it's a pleasure today to be at IFAD Supervision Mission as an implementing partner of this important initiative. Rwanda Polytechnic Sign of an MOU and is, in partner, is partnering with Klima Trust in the implementation of the Rural Youth Employment Support Project to build a technical capacity for rural youth in the agro business association of the wage and also self-employment opportunity. Recently, we had a three-month spare of drought, but in Rwanda we have, on average, over 1,000 millimeters of rain. So we have a lot of rain. When it comes, it really rains. Uh, so our capacity to harvest water and make sure that can take us through the, the three short months of drought it is, a, it is a big gap. So recently, we've been finding it difficult to find fresh milk because of the drought. Because you know, traditionally, uh, our farmers, they used to be people, pastorists, and uh, they just migrate to Tanzania during the rainy season. And then they come back. We actually could harvest grass in April, May. Uh, we have a lot of grass from the bush. <laughs> so it's only started recently. So that's a niche. You know, to see the gap, instead of following the crowd, everyone is going there, so let me also go there, to see where not, say, ah, uh, I think this is the, the best place to go. It's a big market, because sooner or later, we have to do smart farming 
our land is not increasing, our population is increasing. So better farming methods for young people. Maybe this knowledge and um, information is what's missing when our young people are making decisions. But I want again to say thank you, IFAT, thank you, Kirima, um, and of course the young people who are answering the call because the population in 20, by 2050, the population will be 10 million. So there will always be a market for food. And it's going to be even more. Thank you very much. I'm very much, uh, uh, you know, honored to be able to to say hello to you again, and good to see everybody. First of all, I would like to thank the Climo uh, Trust, and particularly the Initiatives uh, Delivery Team led by Andrew, and also with the the other members in your consortium, particularly the um, you know the Rwanda Polytechnic but also more so the Rural Youth Forum. This is a pilot. And it's a pilot that is building on some good examples of uh, youth incubations or incubators that have been tested by other initiatives before. It is a much more advanced incubation process that uh, brings in all aspects of incubation. That is why it is we called it integrated. And this pilot is supposed to lead to bigger things. It is already being looked at within IFAD as an eye opener to how we can reach out to young people to create jobs. So the results are very important, not only to IFAD, but also to our partners. Because when this succeeds and we have good results, it means it can be scaled up within our loan programs and our other grant programs. Even though we are starting, Rwanda and Nigeria actually are the, the ones that are in the forefront. We started with these two because that's where we saw there was a low hanging fruit with all the requirements that was to take us uh, 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 with a good pace of implementation. Although this is a pilot and I must say that Rwanda is one of the most advanced ones now, so far, there's already learning that is emerging from this work that is inject being injected into our Low, big loan project design processes. And a good case is um, Burundi. We just actually are going to quality assurance on Burundi. We had Pakistan. We also just designed a big intervention in Chad. They're using the model. And some of the things we are actually telling them in these design processes is that it has happened like this in Rwanda so far. We don't have much results, but this is what is happening. So as you implement, you're already informing big, huge programs because of what is happening. So uh, we need to document, we need to track, we need to identify which data do we want to collect to support what we are doing. And it has to be good quality data because it is important when we use it to analyze, to inform bigger initiatives that are, that are coming. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity for us to talk a little bit more in depth about targeting and gender issues. Thank you for inviting Liam to this special mission of supervision of first year of RIS project. Under RIS project, we have, have the responsibilities to onboard youth through awareness and the mobilization campaign to identify most promising employment of opportunities for the youth and identify policy, dialogue, and advocacy opportunities to onboard partner, potential partners and stakeholders in the implementation of the project.
So thank you. Uh, yes, I'm uh, here with uh, Sam Bossa. We have been asked by EFAD to assess the green jobs opportunities in the EFAD um, Agri Business Hub program. <clears throat> Straight into it then, um, scope for green jobs. Thank you for allowing us to join the meeting to learn from your presentations and the very interesting interviews we just had. I'm very excited that you have invited young people to testify and testify and give us the insights uh, how to deal with uh, their aspirations. And I hope one of their aspirations would also be green jobs, sustainable development. Green jobs are essentially uh, those who are involved in the production services, which we call green, <clears throat> such as in organic agriculture, waste recycling, also jobs um, related to adaptation to climate change, those in green buildings, renewable energy, et cetera. So the end product or service is green, is environmentally sustainable. It helps combating climate change. I'm Andy Frank Ugamba, and I'll be presenting our M&D system together with my colleague, Andrew Chiboy. We have a, a, a management and information uh, system, which we call MIS. It's, it's, it's a, an online uh, system that's posted on our website, Kilimo Trust website, and um, it, uh, it allows us to generate reports against comparing the performance indicators and uh, the achievements against the targets. But we also have our internal performance evaluation, uh, like the key performance indicators, which are Excel tables that allow us to track the performance. We set our plans, we have the achievements, and we know at which percentage in time we are as far as um, uh, tracking or evaluating ourselves. This is the environment, uh, the m and system, which has all our projects. And uh, within, uh, currently we have, uh, these are running projects, uh, we are able to see. Uh, we have um, a number of projects and uh, we've also then we've created the uh, rural youth, uh, the areas project within the m and system. that people who can access uh, this system to view and uh, maybe download some documents. Others have uh, the ability to do data entry, while others like myself, who is a super administrator, can create uh, the projects and also give rights. Uh, for this project, uh, what we have done now is to prepare the environment. And uh, so we, have, we can have uh, the areas of operations, we've set targets, but also do data entry. And uh, what unique thing about this project is, of course, it's, it's only in Rwanda. So our projects have the power to, because we also operate in East Africa, to, to look to um, assign projects across regions. And we have several partners that we mapped now. I hope all of them will participate. Uh, I think we have had some names here, like the Kishare, Ngoma, Ui, and all those. And so uh, if we have a project that is uh, an activity that's happening, say, in uh, Uye, and we are, uh, we, are, we are following a particular indicator, so we can map that particular indicator into the IPRC. And uh, then this, this uh, zero into what Tom was mentioning in the morning, that we are able to track the graduates uh, right from uh, when they are enrolled and uh, when they exceed and graduate, and uh, which pathway are they following beyond uh, the, the skill uh, program, whether they are going into uh, safe employment or wage employment, and if they are going for safe employment, uh, how many other people are they going to employ within their businesses? Mm -hmm.